Hey guys, so I'm sitting outside the hair salon right now. I'm a little bit early for my hair appointment and I've been going back and forth about this for weeks now on if I want to share this, how I want to share it. I don't, I don't even know where to start. That's the crazy part because I'm so used to like when I share things in my life, it's like in the moment and now I like have to backtrack and it just seems kind of confusing to me, but we're just going to go back in time here a little bit. So here we are. We got to go back to Thursday, May 2nd when I went to the hospital for my routine mammogram. I'm usually pretty good about getting it done once a year. I missed 2023 for whatever reason and got it done in 2024. And I got a phone call the very next day, which happened to be the morning of me getting the house all ready for the realtor to come through to do the walkthrough room by room where I was like taking the notes of like what pieces of furniture to get rid of, things like that. So when they called <clears throat> and I got all the information, basically they just said they seen something that they want to further investigate. And I was like, well, can I get some more information? And they're like, sure. Do you want to talk to a nurse? I'm like, yes. So the nurse gets on the phone and she's like, hold on, let me bring up the report. And she's like, okay, well, they found a 1.5 centimeter mass on your left breast and you need to come back in for some further scans. The radiologist will be like right there. We'll look at it immediately. And also there could be a chance that you may also need an ultrasound. So basically they're looking at the shape, the edges. Basically they're looking, does this mask look like it could be cancerous or not? And if you Google it, you're going to get all kinds of information of what exactly they're looking for. And you're going to get all kinds of statistics such as, because I screenshotted a lot of this, the size, shape, and margins, which is the edges of the mass, can help the radiologist decide how likely it is to be cancer. Um, about 10% will get called back for further testing. And out of those, only about 0.5% will be found to have cancer. Um, a breast ultrasound is most often done to find out if a problem found by a mammogram or a physical exam of the breast may be a cyst filled with fluid or a solid tumor. So that's the reason for the ultrasound. So you can get information online that's gonna make you feel a little bit better. Some of it's maybe gonna make you feel a little bit worse. Statistics to me don't really mean a lot because you can be that one person. You know, if somebody said it's one out of a hundred or one out of a thousand, it doesn't really mean anything because you could be that one. And you know, I don't know what else to say about that. So basically, I've been just carrying this around for the past couple of weeks. Like, I have moments where it's usually when I'm like getting ready in the morning or getting in the shower at night and I'm constantly like checking it. Oh, my doctor's office ended up calling me to the following week and the nurse at the doctor's office gave me a little bit more information. She had told me that it was at the one to two o'clock area, which if you think of it, like this it's this portion which is a not a good sign in the sense that that's the most common area where breast cancer can be found six inches from the nipple this is probably way too much tmi but i'm just like you know if i'm going to talk about this i'm just i'm gonna let like let's just spell it out right <sighs> going back to the day after the mammogram when i got the phone call I didn't say anything to Ken right away because I didn't want that like whole time frame when the realtor was there to be this like stressful situation. I'm like, we can, we'll get through this. I'll just tell him later. And I can remember I was like, I must have said something that was like sort of snappy or something. <clears throat> and he was like, are you okay? Is something wrong? And I'm like, no, I'm fine. So he had went like back down to his office and I had texted him like 
what had happened like that I got the phone call and I'm like I don't want to talk about it Ken's the type of person he would get on Google he would start getting information he would start saying well this is what I read this is what I think which I appreciate but at the same time I had already looked up like my own information and like you know what I mean like that can be helpful but also like too much at the same time and at this point we know nothing and this is something that is so routine and I know people and I've talked to some of my friends that have had to do this many times go back get a second mammogram everything's fine and of course like I pray that that's me and it could be me it's just that chance that it's not that just freaks you out and I think the hard part about it is is when you're waiting for any kind of like bad news like this you're just it consumes your every thought that is the worst part of all of this that's the, been the hardest part these past two weeks is the constant like <clears throat> just it popping back up in your mind the constant thinking about it the constant not knowing on top of like going through it at the same time of this house stuff but it's interesting because sometimes I find myself thinking about like is this a test is this all a test is this is is this to see like how strong I am like because if you judged me, if you judged my strength off of my emotions, and if you were basing that off of tears, I could be considered a weak person because I am overly emotional and it doesn't take much for me to cry. On the other hand, I am actually a very strong person, believe it or not. I think you can be both. That's what's that's what I think sometimes people don't give themselves credit for. Just because you are emotional or upset about something doesn't necessarily mean that you're not strong. You know what I mean? And I and I think honestly that I wonder I wonder if I'm sitting in this hair place if they can see out the window and I'm literally sitting in my car talking to a camera, wiping tears from my face. They probably think, oh my god, this girl's extra. That's funny. So you know what's interesting? At the end of the day, part of me feels like I considered not talking about this at all. Not because I feel like it's too personal to share. I don't. This is something that women go through every day. Honestly, I can't really even put into words why I was considering not sharing it. So with that being said, tomorrow is my appointment tomorrow to get up not early but my appointment's at 10 15 it's gonna be nerve-wracking it's not gonna be easy <laughs> um i'm but i'm very ready for that day to be over with i just want to know on what's gonna happen from that day forward like i just I'm ready for the answer, whatever that answer is going to be. Hopefully, I'll be sharing no news, if you know what I mean. All right, guys, got the second mammogram, and thankfully, I'm in the clear. I'm so relieved. I just am so grateful to be able to just get back to normal life. I know I've mentioned it in previous videos. I haven't been able to read this whole entire month. I just feel like I haven't been able to focus on anything else but this. And it was kind of crazy when we had the list of all the things that we needed to get done around the house when there was like nothing left. And I told Ken, I'm like, well, come on, let's, we got to power wash the house. He's like, oh, I was thinking of waiting and doing it Thursday. And I was so mad because it was like Monday. And I'm like, what am I going to do rest of the week? I have nothing to do. Like I need things to do. I just wanted to continue to be like super busy to occupy my mind. The more I had to do, the better it was to get through the day. And my mind would just like look at the clock. And as soon as it was like eight, nine o'clock, then I knew I could take a shower, get in bed, watch some shows and like just be done for the day. Like I just wanted the days to go by as quick as possible to just get to this day. And yesterday when I filmed this previous footage and had my hair appointment, I literally came home from my hair appointment, ate a little something, laid down, 
took a nap, told Ken I'm just, I'm like, I don't know why, I'm just so exhausted. I feel so drained. I don't know what is wrong with me. And he's like, well, I'll just lay down and take a nap. So I did. I got up, hard, <laughs> really did nothing, like nothing yesterday. And he had dinner in the crock pot. So it was like, by the time I ate lunch, it was like, I don't know, two o'clock. And then I was up eating dinner at like six, 630. And shortly after I was like, all right, I think I'm gonna go lay down in bed. And I was asleep like last night at 11 p.m. I did wake up at seven this morning. So, I mean, how can one person possibly need that much sleep? I think it was, yes, I was just tired and stressed about today, but also like I just wanted today to be here. So I'm just like, if I just sleep today, I'll get here faster. So yeah, the appointment, um, how that went was, you know, came in, she actually showed me on the screen what, the area looked like that they were concerned with and that kind of blew my mind because what I had saw on Google was like these like round little masses so in my mind I just kept visualizing like okay where they said it it's at it just must be this like little circle thing it was like barely there like it wasn't even it, like it's white on the screen and it wasn't even like solid white. It was like barely there. It was crazy. Um, and only one image of it because for a mammogram, what did she do? Two images? I can't remember the first time what she did. Today she did four. And wow, it really, really hurt because they try to compress your breast tissue as much as possible to make sure... I mean, it only makes sense. I get why they're doing it. Just to make sure they're getting like the best of you. The more that they can smash it down, the better. And she's like, just try to like tolerate as much as you can. I'm so sorry. She's like, the you know, the more we can do, the better. And I was just like, it's fine. It's fine. The last couple, the angle she was at, oh my gosh, was so painful. And I'm like, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. She's like, I'm trying to hurry. She was such a nice gal. So yeah, we got done with those and she's like, well, don't get dressed yet. I'm going to go take them to the radiologist. And while I was standing there waiting, there was like another girl in like the little waiting, like these little like dressing room things. They came up to her and they were like, okay, well the radiologist is still concerned. We want to get a further look with the ultrasound. And I was like, oh no, I just kept, I don't know. It just was everything leading up to it was just all these like negative thoughts. Of course, you're just thinking the worst and, um, probably about, I don't know. It took like another five minutes. I'm like, boy, I'm going to be waiting a while because if they need to do an ultrasound on me too, I'm going to have to wait for her and you know, whatever. And then my gal, I had like a different tech. And when she came back, she's like, all right, Candy, you're all set. She's like, everything looks good. She said, um, there's nothing there. She goes, all clear. The area that they were concerned with must have just been overlapping tissue, which makes sense. Which I understand like what that means completely. I get it. Um, it's just, I was just... It felt like a surreal moment. I just felt so relieved. And I was like, oh, just thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I was just so, like, felt like tears coming to my eyes. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to start crying in here. <laughs> so I was like, just wait till you get outside. <laughs> so right away I called Ken. And, yeah, I'm just really relieved. So when I was thinking about it, when I was driving and kind of here on my way home, I'm at, sitting in the post office parking lot right now. Um, I'm feeling all this relief and then it like just entered into my mind of also like, not, I guess guilt. I don't know what other word to think about. Like, I guess just hearing that other woman next to me, what answer she got, she had to go get her ultrasound and just that women every day have to go through this. And I know that this is just one medical issue among hundreds and thousands that we as humans have to deal with but it just seems like you know breast cancer breast issues are 
just one that's like a very just devastating, really hard, mentally, physically, just all around difficult situation to have to deal with. And um, I don't know, like for, like I said, for a minute there, I just felt like, um, like just guilt. And then I'm like, no, you can't, like, I don't know. I don't know how to describe the feeling that I felt there for a second. Cause I guess you just feel so lucky that, you know, it's, it's not me. Not today anyways, you know? So hopefully we can get back to regular scheduled programming from here moving forward and I can get back to my normal, happy, joyous self because those past couple of weeks were kind of difficult to just, I just didn't know how I wanted to approach it, how I wanted to talk about it, if I wanted to share it or any of that. I just, I just didn't know. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. Really appreciate it. And um, have a great weekend. I will, and I will see you guys next week.